Hey, people, this is the time. I mean, we are legitimately worth a shit this year. Oh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, outsiders of all ages, if you're a Longhorn fan, you got some big numbers to remember. Five days till that portal opens, 10 days till the spring game, and there's plenty of Longhorn football to talk about tonight. It is the outsiders. We will introduce you to the crew in just a moment. Once we remind you in a very masterful way that this is the outsiders brought to you by poncho look at your right side you get the model showing it off you look to your lower left in the quad box you see our model showing it off that's not the same person i thought that was the same guy in both no you know what mine's that better dude, it has pearl snaps that's right that dude on that's the, the right amen one. This guy right here can only dream of having the deep-chested wonder. Oh, it comes here's... with actual Augusta pimento cheese. Oh, yeah. there it is. Gross. No, but look. You, there you, it is. Show me back up there, Chad. See, this is the thing. Yeah. Our friend Bo, he's wearing the amen over here. That's right. Or if you prefer the non-pearl snaps, our friends at Poncho have the magnolia. That's right. Mm. Two different exactly. shirts for different kind of people. It is and all about those choices. that... Don't prefer pimento salad or pimento cheese. I have egg salad from my amazing master's party on Sunday. The pulled pork got all eaten. Beautiful. But so did the cookies and the popcorn and everything else. But we still have some pimento hey, cheese. Just so leave hit the me up. couple day old egg salad. Just go ahead and throw that away. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it no, wasn't bad it enough much. that it, it came through the mail already. This is mail <laughs> or egg salad. It's also been sitting in Bo's house for four days. Oh, <laughs> that's rough. Yeah, that's why they didn't want it, Bo. It's that's like the eggs. That's like the eggs from Napoleon Dynamite when that old man's out there. <laughs> yeah, that's, well, it's goodness. what I had for lunch today. So, oh. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> Not good, Poncho. It's I think I office by myself. <laughs> yeah, Poncho is the official shirt of uh, of Bo's Masters get together. Uh, Chance uh, earlier, you may have seen tweeted out a beautiful amen. Uh, that uh, that arrived as well. It is uh, it's a good mat. It's Masters Week, so it could be the official shirt of that, gentlemen. It is also the official shirt of just looking at that eclipse. <laughs> there he is, Doc Hastings live, not live. Doc Hastings in Waxahachie, Texas. He's ready to go with super glasses, a filter for a telescope, something they picked up at the grocery store, and he's still using the poncho pocket for his phone. All of that was happening on Monday. And also, shout out to one of my best friends in the world that took that picture on the right side. She apparently had access to a telescope. That's a oh. badass picture yeah, that, that uh, the good doctor pulled off. All right. It is the Outsiders. Let's go. Your upper left on a What Are You Drinking Wednesday is Chance Mock. Chance, we drinking anything special tonight? No, nothing special tonight. Just my MVP vodka, water, and lemon juice. That's pretty much all I do. That's what keeps him buff. Our lower right, as always, is Jason Dick. Jason, anything fancy for the people? Well, uh, doing my best to, to keep buff as well, uh, Chad. Um, this is uh, two straight shows for me, and so I was in a celebratory mood, and so I got myself a uh, a seniorial non-alcoholic sangria. Nice. Natural flavor soda. A non-alcoholic seniorial sangria. I have no idea what to expect here. I had to. Oh, that's old school. Pop that bad boy yeah, off. Yeah. Let's go. Take a hit off of that and let us know. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. I don't think there's anything better oh. than non alcoholic sangria. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> oh. Jason's going to be off for a month after that. You <laughs> feel the rich non alcoholicness flowing through my system. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's coursing through me. <clears throat> They use extra special it's grapes oh. for that. Yeah, there you go. Well, Our lower... I will balance the sheet with my fully leaded alcoholic John Daly that I'm drinking, which is, of course, the Deep Eddy Sweet Tea Vodka in Ooh. copious amounts, which with the Deep Eddy Lemonade Vodka in copious amounts with a splash of tonic, just to you know, kind of mix it up a little. Okay, there you go. Got a heavy, uh, a heavy golf influence on our lower left. That is the country. Well, I had leftovers. My, <laughs> had a party. Had leftovers. Got to use them. So let's go. He's drinking John Daly's and smelling like eggs. Love it. 
drinking John Daly's and he's slamming egg salad sandwiches. That I, is I feel sorry for the person on Southwest Air flight to Las Vegas at 8.45 tomorrow morning oh, wow. that I'm on. No, yeah. it's only a pit stop in Vegas before we get to Santa Barbara, but that's going to be a fun flight for that guy. That <laughs> is rough. That is rough. Uh, so as we, get, viral. <laughs> as we get started, also a shout out to Poncho for some new gear you might want to be on the lookout for. There are new ultra light shirts coming out. Be on the lookout for those. Also for crawfish season, they got a mud bug you may want to check out. PonchoOutdoors.com. Com. Gentlemen, as I mentioned, we're 10 days from the spring game, five days from the portal opening. There's portal stuff to talk about. And if everybody has been following, if you're a nerd, you know that Texas is sitting at 89 on that scholarship number. Can't be at 89. You got to be at 85. So there's going to be some exits. And gentlemen, today was maybe exit number one. Uh, it is being reported later in the afternoon and the evening. Samaje Burrell, the linebacker, I believe redshirt freshman linebacker, if I'm not mistaken, no longer on the team. Uh, so that has happened today. But this, we're about to get into this portal time, and we're going to discuss another defensive lineman possibility coming up. Um, but in terms of these numbers, Chance, let me start with you. In your mind, are you just thinking get down to 85, let the guys go that need to go? Or are you thinking let those guys go plus a couple and then refurbish? Are you are you still looking for something in the portal? I think you're always looking for something in the portal. That's the that's the way of today's world. Like you know, the the first day you get on campus, from that day on, they're looking for somebody to replace you, right? I think. I think a little bit of it is just going to be by its own attrition. I think it will work itself out. There are some big position battles going on right now of guys that can play at other at other places and will have the ability. And those guys are in battles, and there's going to be frank conversations about where they're at, and it's going to weed itself out. I think you let the whole thing run its course, and I think if you have an opportunity to go get, and we'll talk about it later, but if you have an opportunity to go get a guy that's a game changer – you go get that guy and you let it work itself out, but you have honest conversations with people in the front. Well, well what do you think? Chance, the only thing I would say to that is Sark has a roster right now, whether it's 85, 89, 91, he has a roster that is going to be one of the top five teams going into the season. Mm -hmm. You don't just go get another guy unless it absolutely helps the team, not just on the field, but all around the field. Like it has to be somebody that fits in because you can't have a team that's ready to go compete for a title and bring in some a-hole from somewhere else that's leaving because his teammates don't like him and his coach doesn't like him. But yes, he's really talented. And I'm not speaking about any individual player. I'm just saying you have to get a guy that fits. If you, you can't just go take a guy, you have a team that is as assembled, potentially good enough to win the whole damn thing. Don't take a risk on a guy unless you know he's the right guy. By the way, a couple of, a couple of notes real quick, Chance. I uh, want to let everybody know, scheduled to appear on tonight's <laughs> Outsiders show, Jeff Ketchum of orangebloods.com. We're definitely hoping he jumps in at 8, uh, 845 because there's a lot of stuff to update. Bear Alexander, big defensive lineman from USC. There had been talk about, is he going to get into the portal? As of today, he tweets out that he's going to stay at USC and work for a national championship. Mm -hmm. But that portal went portal mm. has not opened yet. So we're going to talk about him. Don't worry. Also, our man Chris Bennett checking in on the chat that Sark has now put out something that Burrell's been suspended indefinitely for conduct detrimental. And he also mentions there is discussion out there that maybe Burrell was somehow involved in the Tavandre sweat incident. So maybe that did not uh did not. Just Sit putting well his finger up chance with the head coach. Um, I just wanted to see how yes, long gentlemen. Chance would have his finger in the air. <laughs> oh, no. I, saw chance, I saw Chance first. Let's let Chance go first. No, I had to put it up there because our dear friend Deep Eddie Bo at the bottom over here has a real problem with putting words in Chance's mouth. At no point did Chance say who to go get. All Chance said was exactly what Bo said is that if there is a guy out there that you think fits what you do, you go get him. And then Bo proceeded to go on his rant about, let me tell you where I disagree with you and say everything that I did not say. No, you said if a guy was really talented, you go get him. And I you said there's an asterisk next to it. 
if the guy fits. You can take that asterisk and put it where the <laughs> clips well, was. Hang on. I have a legitimate uh, thing here. Um, if you are at a, a program at Texas where the, the culture is reportedly so strong, where things have, uh, under Sark have gone so good, can you take a, I don't want to say bad egg, but let's say uh, the egg salad that Bo has had resting on his counter for a couple days. It's not quite bad, but it's a little questionable. Can you take a questionable egg and bring him in, somebody who didn't work out somewhere else, and bring him in here and say, hey, we're, we're going to teach this guy how to, how to operate as a, as a good teammate? Just let me say this. If you were to put Bo's egg salad in the refrigerator as it sits right now without putting foil on top of it, the smell would permeate every bit of other food you had, and it would ruin the food that was good. That's why you don't introduce wow. bad eggs into the locker room. You just don't. Questionable eggs. Right? Questionable but I eggs. Think, yeah, they're not questionable. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> but my thing is this. <laughs> I, I think Sark takes that in compare. That is in consideration with every player he's got. I think there are guys out there that probably wanted to come to Texas and it didn't get leaked and everywhere else, and Sark talked to him, and it just wasn't a good fit. I don't think he introduces a guy into the locker room that's going to be an issue. I, I really I, – I don't see – he knows what he's got. I don't see him jeopardizing it for – there's – I don't think there's anybody out there that it would be worth that. All right. Uh, we can hopefully Jeff catch him coming up here in just a couple of minutes. Bo, before we get there, there are definitely some folks around the Austin area that may have had uh, <clears throat> a roof situation happen in the last uh, 24 to 30 hours or so. Let's tell them about Prosperity Roofing. Yes. If your house was hit by the hailstorm that hit Central Texas just yesterday, Prosperity is who you want to call. The reason being, they give you the peace of mind. Over the next two or three weeks, there's going to be a lot of people, storm chasers, coming in town, advertising the moon and the stars and all kinds of discounts. That's not how Prosperity works. They're a local, central Texas-based business that supports their community. They've been around 15-plus years. They're family-owned. They want to take care of you. And they're going to be here two years, three years, 10 years down the road when something goes wrong with your roof. Give them a call, 512-810-1747. That's 512-810-1747. Shingle, tile, standing seam metal, whatever you need, Prosperity will give you the peace of mind to know your house is safe. Bo, I saw them in my neighborhood today. Saw I saw the vultures today, uh, the roof vultures, and I thought of Prosperity and uh, and the show tonight. So yes, make sure uh, you check out Prosperity Roofing and don't don't go with the vultures. All right, um, and hope everybody is good after last night. It was a crazy hailstorm in a, in a lot of the areas. Um, so back to this discussion of of portal and you know again, this is the. With the, the Burrell situation, that puts 89 to 88. There's going to be some more guys that go. Um, and re realize we're five days away from the opening of the portal. It goes 15 days, 15th to the 30th. And obviously the spring game is right in the middle of it. Guys, let me ask it this way. Since Bear Alexander's been in the discussion, I've also heard this: those Michigan defensive linemen that everybody wants to jump into the portal, they're a big part of the discussion. Chance, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to ask all three of you as Longhorn fans. Do you want interior defensive line help? Bottom line, do you want it if it makes sense? Chance? If it makes sense, I absolutely want it. And where I have more interest in the guys from Michigan is <clears> – <throat> regardless of how much I have just complete and utter disdain for that turd stain that is Jim Harbaugh, that locker room culture that they had at Michigan was pretty good. And those guys are going to come from a situation that I believe they're not as much of a concern. They understand the team atmosphere. They understand the, you know, the camaraderie. They understand how to play for each other. And so there would be more interest there. Again, I go back to if it fits, I would love experience – defensive line interior to come in just to help. I mean, to continue, look at what we were able to do last year. Yeah, you were anchored by two monsters, but when you're rolling four guys through there, it does eventually wear on people. All right, guys, I do see Jeff Ketchum's ready to go, but real quick, the other two of you, Bo, yes, yes on defensive line? Yes on defensive line, no on receivers, no on offensive line unless it's a game changer. But defensive line – is the lifeblood of the defense, and I like Vernon Broughton and Alfred Collins, but neither one has shown enough in games for me to think that they're the only guy. 
So if we can okay. get somebody that can actually – that has shown it on game tape, yes, because you can use a rotation there. Jason, you agree? 100%. Uh, yes. Uh, we're losing two NFL first-rounders, or at least what were two first-rounders, uh, at defensive tackle. And I'm sure there are some uh, some great young guys on this roster, but if you can bring somebody in, I say bring him in. And if his name is Bear, I'm sure that's a nickname, but that is kick-ass, man. Yeah. Yeah, well, can, I, can I ask you guys to, to call me Bear? Can I be what? Bear Dick from now on? <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys down with that? Uh, we're gonna go dick bear just to, you know. that sounds like a, a male prophylactic brand <laughs> i'm not completely a, uh, a really comfortable with either one of those jason we'll have to workshop that one okay. but i agree with you the name is cool in fact it's such a cool name it is his name when you look him up it's listed as bear alexander it's not one of those yeah. you know like what was the dude in basketball recently that was named what scooter right like Sir, oh. Scoot, right? There was Scoot Henderson. Yeah. What sometimes your name just becomes your name. Your nickname is your name. That's kind of the way Bear is. All right. So we'll talk about that and some more coming up. If we are about to talk to a great guest, that means it's brought to you by Last Stand Hats. If you do not have your outsiders hat, what the hell are you doing? There's 12 different kinds. The white one is sitting right up here in the Hall of Helmets, ready to roll. That's the old Daryl and Gus version, or there's 11 other styles for you, plus all gas, no brakes, plus DBU, plus Occupy Left Field, and so many other cool designs. Check them out. Last Stand Hats Outsiders 10 is your promo code. Let's talk more Longhorn football with the often promised and occasionally present Jeff. Catch him. That's right. We'll even make it a top center tonight, ladies and gentlemen. That is Jeff Ketchum, the owner of OrangeBloods.com, the boss of all bosses, the man who will fill you in on Texas Longhorn football information. What's up, Ketch? I just want to let Chance know that if we're calling Jason Bear Dick, <laughs> what that really means is that he's the anti prophylactic. <laughs> See, that's not a brand of condom <laughs> letting women know from the very beginning i only go one way my name is bear dick <laughs> they call me bear dick yeah that's a whole nother whole nother name all right gentlemen we have finally done it we have gotten jeff ketchum back on the outsiders bo since you're wearing the master's theme shirt I'll give you the honors. First question for Jeff Ketchum. What do you want to know? Are you actually happy to be here, or did we guilt you into it after four weeks? <laughs> well, it's kind of a combination of the two. Like, I love coming on the show, but I hate missing appearances. And then it's like, oh, golly. You know, it's just been one thing after another, but I have been staring at the clock since 7 tonight. I, I was on time. I was one minute early, which is, as Chad will tell you, that's the amount of respect that I give him on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Let's talk. <laughs> there it is. Hey, All right. Well, well first, real quick, first thing, Catch, I don't know if you caught the end of it, um, but, but I do want to know your thoughts on this. Bo and I, I think Jason, we're all on the same page, that if you do find an interior defensive lineman that fits the mold, while I do think we have some guys that have shown the ability to compete, it's never going to hurt to have a guy that's put stuff on game film in the middle of it. Would you Would you buy or sell that? I would buy that. You know, the, the tough thing is, is I can remember before the last portal opened up and I was talking to somebody who has, he's aware, he's aware of what happens on the NIL, NIL front at Texas. And he was like, you know, the one position that doesn't have to go into the portal ever are defensive tackles because the NFL has proven – They'll go anywhere to get those guys. And so teams, schools, make sure they have money to pay their D tackles. Uh, there weren't a lot. Outside of Walter Nolan, there really weren't a lot of interior guys that entered the portal, unlike quarterback, unlike wide receiver, unlike almost every other position, which you can go shopping. So I think it's going to be real interesting to see what actually becomes available in the portal. I don't think it's any secret around the country. I think people know – the Longhorns are looking to upgrade at defensive tackle. Sark hasn't really, when publicly asked about it, he certainly hasn't skewed away from that. 
He hasn't said that's what they're going to do, but he hasn't said that we're not going to do that. So I think Bear Alexander's a guy that you got to continue to watch. I think here's what I think happened there. I think somebody that knows Bear or is close to Bear or used to be close to Bear heard what was going on, loose lips sink ships. I think it just came out too early. I mean, Chad and I were talking about this today on our show where it's like, you know, it the portal opens up on the 15th. It's the 10th. He's still at practice. He's still doing USC team activities. Uh, I think this – look, and I also said, look, maybe push comes to shove, that kid never enters the portal. But I think that this story is still in its infancy stage. I wouldn't be shocked at all based on what I was hearing behind the scenes that he enters the portal at some point after the 15th. Uh, but I also think what we may see that's different than what we thought might have happened yesterday is that – Remember when Jeff Trailer was all pissed off about the Trey Moore stuff? And he was like, I've talked to high school coaches who they tell me what's going on, and I know who's messing around with our players. When Trey Moore entered the portal, the thought was, that dude's going to Texas. But then he took a visit to Alabama. He was talking to Ohio State. He ends up at Texas. But nobody could say with the way the events unfolded, it was an absolute slam dunk to Texas. He certainly gave the appearance that there was a recruitment of sorts. I think based on what happened today and yesterday, Bear Alexander may end up doing the same thing, that there may be a visit or two that's mixed in because there doesn't want to be any appearances that a kid who can't technically enter the portal already had his stuff tied up and all loose ends ready to go before legally he's supposed to. Catch, what about... Sorry, I was going to say, Jeff, does some of that tied up that you speak speak of, is that NIL related? Is that somebody that was on his behalf potentially soliciting, finding dollars, and as you said, the cat got out of the bag? I'm not implicating the University of Texas or anything like that, but is that the type of thing that you're alluding to if somebody was shopping too early? All these guys have representation. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's, it's their not- job to make sure that people are aware of whatever the situations are as they are. So, yeah, I, I think – I don't know that Bear's done anything wrong, but I think he's probably got people – too many people – too many cooks in the kitchen will – that leaves the, the door open for people to walk outside of the kitchen and tell other people what kind of meals being made. And I it- don't think – that that's what, if I was advising Bear Alexander, I would have told everybody, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, it's five days, five more days, shut up. I have some egg salad, they'll be fine. Five <laughs> more days, be quiet on the 15th, Yahtzee. But and is it not similar to the, the tampering period of the NFL, which is the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my entire life because free agency hadn't even opened, but agents can, you know, talk to, you just can't talk to the, players themselves, but everything's still going on behind the scenes. Well, yes. yes, the answer is yes. And look, Chad and I have discussed this a lot where Texas, all there's, there's, there's a grapevine that exists behind the scenes in college football um, where everybody's kind of a whore. Whores talk to other whores. It's a, it's trade business, right? And there were guys that were rumored that were going to end up in the portal that didn't. And that happens a lot. Why does that happen? Because their handlers, their agents, their lawyers, their marketing people, you start adding it all up and these dudes have a lot of people and they just talk too much or they talk. And ultimately you know, I, I, I have USC is going to try to back up the Brinks truck to keep Bear Alexander. Is there a price where he would say, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to stay. I Maybe, probably. We'll see if that happens. I do get the sense that he knows if he comes to Texas, he'll be leaving NIL dollars on the table. And the sense that I got from talking to people on Bear Alexander's side of things was that he'd be comfortable with that. But 
you know, like I got to be careful too. I'm talking to people that should know what's going on, but these things fall apart all the time. Isaiah Bond was expected to enter the portal. He didn't. Portal closed. Texas had been waiting on someone bigger at the wide receiver to enter the portal. It didn't happen. Only Nick Saban retiring, thus allowing Isaiah Bond to reevaluate whether he wanted to stay or go. It's the only reason why he entered the portal and, and, and is at Texas right now. So you got to take all these things with a grain of salt. There's a lot of smoke uh, around the Grant kid at Michigan. We'll see. We'll see. I, I, Chance, I always point to like the Mac Brown, Nick Saban stuff. People think they know what was going to happen with Nick Saban based on what his agent, Jimmy Sexton, was saying. But the point never got to there being a contract from Texas on Nick Saban's desk that he had to make a decision on. That never happened. So all we can ever do is speculate on what he would have done if ever put into an actual situation where a decision has to be made. Bear will will get to the 15th unless the world ends. Um, and Bear Alexander will have a decision to make. And at that point, I think he'll it'll be the opposite of the Nick Saban situation. There will be a point where push comes to shove and he has to make a decision. But we're not there yet. That's five days away. A lot can happen in those five days. What I will tell you is that people who are close to that situation, believe that Texas is a very enticing um, situation for him. And I do, I I think there's a sense based on what I was told earlier today that um, he'd like to come closer to home. I don't know if something's going on with his dad or not, but I know there's a sense that he wants to be closer to his dad. So we'll see. It's um, these things get complicated and it's one of the reasons why, Ultimately, this getting out on the ninth, almost a week before the portal opens, didn't do uh, Bear Alexander any good. And from what I was told, the person who released the information is somebody who does know Bear Alexander and is familiar with the people in his camp, but is no longer really affiliated with Bear Alexander. So, you know, that guy opened up his mouth, allegedly, to the wrong people. It gets out. And then we are where we are tonight. Jeff Ketchum joining us here on The Outsiders. More Texas football talk coming up right after you hear from Covert Ford. Cole says Texas proud more than a Ford from Covert Ford of Austin. Deeply rooted in Texas history, the Covert family has taken great pride for over 114 years. That's why you can always depend on Covert Ford to deliver the best customer experience and a superior selection of new Ford vehicles. Shop online at covertford.com. Bo, do you have something for catch? Well, I was just going to say, how many, if I'm, if memory serves, Bear Alexander went to what high school? Denton Geyer? No, it was like 19. He's, <laughs> the last one that, I'm trying to remember who it was. IMG was the ball. last one that he went to. Denton uh, Ryan, the one in Texas. Denton Ryan. Sorry, I said Denton Guy. Denton Ryan. He had teammates that were on that Ryan team there at Texas. Could that also be playing a role in him wanting to come to Texas now that they've told him this Sark guy is the real deal? He may not have known that two or three years ago when he was, you know, going around the country and going to places like USC. Is that kind of a potential that the players are recruiting guys they know can compete? to come take these spots. I mean, yeah, the best player on this Texas defense we think is going to be Anthony Hill, former teammate of Bear Alexander at Denton Ryan. Um, it the, Texas's position and growth as a program over the last 12 months definitely puts itself – think about this. If the Grant kid from Michigan were to enter the portal, he, he just played for a team – like Adonai Mitchell just played on a team that won the national championship. Why does he want to come home? There, there might be a bunch of little reasons why you add them up together and then you have the ultimate decision. But Texas being good and being I, – I can tell you right now, the fact that Texas is perceived as a national championship contender going into this season is a big part of why Bear Alexander is interested in Texas. Hmm. Um, 
Catch, we had a chat come in, and we haven't gotten your thoughts on this yet. We mentioned the Samaj Burrell thing at the beginning. Brent asking, what did Samaj Burrell do? Um, how much can you tell the Texas fans that are watching um, about what the situation was? I mean, he was involved in the situation. You know, it's, it's – kind of like in the police report, like he was involved in the situation with Tavondre Sweat. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I want to be careful here. I don't want to get sued, but I believe allegedly he was in the car that Tavondre Sweat was in an accident with. Ah, the other, he was in the other car. Okay. Correct. And, you know, uh, he may or may not have like hung around for that. <laughs> it may or may not. All you right. just saw one of the sodas that Jason drinks, you know, like a moon mist, and there was a big sign at the convenience store. He was just going to get hydrated. Hey, Rasheed Rice, it's all the rage these days. Get in for an <laughs> uh, automobile issue and then get the hell out of Dodge. Um, I don't know what happened there specifically. So I, spe- I, I probably should. Look, I know what I've been told, but I, I got to be honest, I didn't read the police affidavit. <laughs> Like I, I was told what was in the affidavit. Now I was like, okay, I don't need to go reading through police documents and stuff. Um, the bottom line is, don't be a scout team player and getting into trouble at a time when the Longhorns are looking to get rid of like six or seven dudes. I mean, you're making it easy at that mm-hmm. point. It's an easy. He's suspended indefinitely. But that is a you need to go message from Steve Sarkeesian, who, oh, by the way, did release a statement regarding Samaj Burrell like at eight o'clock tonight. That doesn't always happen. Usually right. when Stark releases a statement on a guy who's that dude is messed up big. The only other guy that I can remember where that has specifically happened is Christopher Ross. And if you'll mm. remember last year, that dude was playing. And then one night he just wasn't in the program anymore. And they issued Sark issued a statement that night saying, yeah, man, he's out. So, you know, I, Samaje Burrell is a really talented guy. I was very high on him <clears throat> as a prospect coming out, but he was always going to be a two or three year developmental guy, a little bit undersized coming out of high school, great athlete needs to mature a little bit as a player and just, you know, I mean, he's like a no, he, he's a normal prospect. He's not one of these dudes that you can just show up and play with 21 year old dudes and make it look easy, like Ryan Wingo. Um, he's only, he wasn't an early enroller a, a year ago. So he's only been in town, he's been in Austin for less than a year. And he just didn't do himself any favors. I think that in a different world, you know, a little more responsibility owned on his part. You could work through this, but the Tavondre Sweat situations and the current players were involved in that. That's not a good look for anybody. Um, I had heard that he was already kind of on the it list a little bit. So I don't know what was going on behind the scenes, but apparently this thing was coming to a head and it did this weekend. And, you know, if I had to guess, Samaj Burrell, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up at U of H. If you're <clears throat> late in the recruiting process before Burrell signed, he flirted with taking an official visit to U of H. And Jeff Choate stopped that from happening. He secured the commitment. But I can remember talking to people in the program who were like, if that dude wants to go, he bounce because we're recruiting better players than him. And, you know, that, he didn't say that before they got Anthony Hill, but once they got Anthony Hill, like in that commitment class, it was like, we can lose any of these other dudes. We got the guy. And to be fair, like Anthony Hill is the guy and Burrell is a player that's third team, fourth team in a position where you can't make mistakes like this. Jason Dick, you got something for uh, Jeff Ketchum? Yeah. Let's talk about something more fun, but equally speculative. Uh, Ketch, I would not be the weak link of the outsiders if I didn't ask the most basic bitch question. Talk to me about the spring camp of one Arch Manning. I am of the belief Arch Manning is not seeing the field next year unless there is a Quinn Ewers injury or garbage time. There are people on this program who will tell you there are special packages that are going to be put in for him to take advantage of his 
his speed, his athleticism. What do you see going into next season for the two quarterbacks? First of all, Jason, we need to set this up. Just like whenever we talk transfer portal at on the show and we run our little 10, 15 second vignette where <laughs> <laughs> we need we need a bear dick intro every time Jason's about to talk. Bear dick. <laughs> there it is. Just to mark the tape, Chad. That, that was it. We got it. Oh my god. I think you're right, Jason. I really do. I, I mean, take a quick story from the weekend. Just an observation that I made. We did an interview. We did interviews. We had a couple of freelance guys work for us this weekend, went down to the university, was we're getting interviews with all of the guys uh, from a recruit standpoint that were there. There were like 20 interviews. And one of the questions that was asked to every single player there was, hey, who stood out? What stood out at the scrimmage today? Give me, tell us something that you saw at the scrimmage. Uh, I didn't tell these guys to ask that question. They just did it. And, uh, it provided some really interesting intel along the way. Three people during the of like the 20 mentioned Quinn Ewers, which was interesting because the offense didn't win Saturday's scrimmage. It was kind of a defensive day. But Jaden Blue, Quinn Ewers, they, they got some shout outs. Not a single person mentioned Arch Manning, which I thought was strange if for no other reason than I didn't hear someone say, hey, I – you know, I went up to get Arch Manning's autograph afterwards. Like, I, you know what I mean? He's got such a profile. I was just surprised that no one mentioned him because of the profile, but nobody mentioned to Arch. And I think it speaks to kind of where he is in his development, which is perfectly fine. I think I've heard a lot of people say that when he and Arch eventually the passing of the torch is made, that it'll be a very seamless transition. I think people are happy with Arch. But there's no quarterback competition. I haven't heard of any of the secret packages that they're going to put in there. And I don't think Arch's people are like, yeah, man, let's do a, a wildcat where Arch is back there at quarterback. I that like That's not what they want. They want him to be a pro quarterback prospect. He's at Texas and under Steve Sarkeesian to get that kind of development. I don't think we're going to see – I'm not saying that we're not. Jason, you and I could be wrong, right? It could be he's got four. Oh, there's no even red shirt to worry about now. So they might just decide, hey, on short yardage situations, we're going to have him do quarterback sneaks. But can you imagine Uncle Peyton watching his nephew? And he's like, wait a minute, what are they doing? <laughs> he's coming in and throwing his shoulder. That'd be the best Manning pass ever. <laughs> oh yeah like that's the one i want to subscribe to so look i think the, the real conversation is if quinn ewers gets hurt and arch has to play a couple of games what the hell does that look like because the nation is going to follow it it's good whatever he does is a headline a major headline on espn.com like it's a thing and if he plays really really well maybe the cat's out of the, maybe the genie's out of the bottle and you can't put it back in I don't know. Like, it's something that we're either Quinn's going to stay healthy for the first time since his sophomore year in high school, uh, or maybe the red shirt year at Ohio State didn't play, so he didn't get hurt. <laughs> but, you know, it, he's got to prove that he can stay on the field for a full season. I think that's one of the questions he has to answer. Uh, if he doesn't and the door gets opened, you know, there's no going back. We will then have a conversation that we'll never be able to undo unless he plays a little bit like Malik Murphy did where, you know, I think we really appreciated what Quinn was when Texas didn't have Quinn for a couple of weeks. And while Malik um, certainly represented himself well, you know, Texas fans and I think coaches were ready for Quinn Ewers to be back on the field. Um, and, you know, maybe that would be the case, but I I'm with you, Jason. I don't expect – there to be like tricks and packages. I think he's the backup quarterback. I think he'll be treated like that. And then if he ever gets on the field, you know, like we got a real live former five-star quarterback that knows what it looks like when the guy that everybody talks about gets on the field for the, like of the first time. And 
And sometimes it's hard to hold that guy back. And sometimes that guy stubs his toe um, and goes and sits back on the bench. It can go, can go either way. So, but, but this would be, this would be the, the, I think the really delicate balance that, that Sark's going to have to do this year. You got to get arch reps because of Quinn's history of being injured. Okay. So now he's got to juggle that because I don't think you can play. Number one, you're going to want to jump Quinn's numbers just because of where he's going to enter the season in the Heisman race. He's got to put up numbers. So we understand that, but you got a team that's ready to win. So you got to get arch reps like that to me is going to be a really interesting dynamic to watch all season. It's very similar to Garrett Gilbert when he was behind Colt McCoy in 2009. And the thought process is, boy, if you ever need Garrett, you probably need to get him a few reps. And then he gets into the Rose Bowl and he never had those reps. But at the same time, the thought process was, even if Colt doesn't get hurt, you want to get Garrett some reps because he's going to be your starting quarterback next year. So I think it's very similar to that because they had to, you know, in 2009, the games just ended up being close all the time. They didn't blow out a lot of teams. OU game was super close. Texas Tech was close. Nebraska was close. You know, they just, it never quite opened up in a way that it was like, oh yeah, we're going to let Garrett have the fourth quarter. And it'll be interesting for all the reasons that you outlined, Chance. Do they get him in with six minutes to go and he's just handing the ball off? Or do they? does he come in when there's 15 minutes to go and he gets to actually throw the ball a little bit and convert some third downs and, and do some real football stuff? I think it would behoove Texas to be able to do that. Um, but it will be a tricky balance that Sark, Sark likes to lean on his guys. He just mm-hmm. does. He's not an early puller of players. Uh, we'll see if that happens this year. I, but the fact that it's Arch – puts a little bit more anxiety and pressure, I think, to make sure that gets done. It's the Outsiders brought to you by Poncho. Uh, Bo ducks out for a second. So, Chance, why don't we tell the folks about Mr. Lindsay and Prodigy Mortgage? Can we do that? Absolutely. You know who won't duck out on you in the middle of the showing when you're trying to close your house? Thad Lindsay and his team (laughs) over at Prodigy Mortgage. Those guys will be there all the way through. And uh, look, We talk about it all the time, and you know, I I live here in the Woodlands, just named the number one place in the country to buy uh, a home. Austin is as well. They're growing communities. They're great communities. We're hoping for a little bit of some some rate cuts, and and that'll be fine, but it doesn't happen unless you got a great team, and the guys over at Prodigy Mortgage are great. Thad Lindsay and his team, they'll quarterback you to a victory. They'll get you the house you love, keep your wife, your husband, whoever it is, happy. That's what you need. That lends in his team, Prodigy Mortgage. All right. There it is. It is the Outsiders brought to you by Poncho. Um, catch in terms – we've had some people, a couple people on the chat throwing this in. I'll be honest. We've been doing the show. I don't know if there's a true thing here, but somebody sent a chat that says, what's up with the John Tay thing? Robert, we appreciate the chat. Uh, catch, is there any reason you and I are both in the John Tay Cook fan club for those that are in there with us in the meetings every week? Is there any reason to be freaking out right now about, uh, about number one? No, I think the morning show, I think they had a provocative, is it time to, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it's like time to worry about John Tay Cook. And then I think inevitably the answer is no, but You know, I I think that we've been consistently reporting for the last few days. They want to see more consistency there. Uh, Day in and day out, he's been a little up and down. Considering he's, along with Isaiah Bond, thought to be like the main two guys this year in the passing game and that they've both been a little up and down. uh, I think that there's a conversation about like they just need more consistency from a young player uh, and – I think that was conveyed in in Anwar and Alex's show, but I think the headline is the headline. And the headline of the show was, is it time to worry about John Tay Cook? It worked in a way. Like, I think it got people to, like, watch the show. I think, you know, they were wanting to see what was said. Um, But no, I, you know, look, John Tay Cook's a young guy. He's going to be a starting wide receiver. He needs to be more consistent. And I haven't run away from saying even on Monday, like we need to stop talking about these guys in the same sentence 
with Adonai Mitchell and Xavier Worthy. They're not that yet. They're not. They, they could be eventually be, but they're not yet. And the problem is that when we talk about them in the same sentence, and I've been somewhat guilty of that too, so I don't want to like point fingers at anybody. We It's a really talented group of wide receivers. But more than like two-thirds of the way through camp, these dudes aren't Adonai Mitchell and Xavier Worthy of a year ago. And so – I think that's the conversation. When people are doing projections on Jonte's stats, and it's like, oh, I think he could have a 1,000-yard season and catch 10 touchdowns and catch 75 passes. When he's not consistent in April, that feels a little premature. And again, I think that's the conversation. There's a little nuance there. There's no Jonte thing. This will be forgotten by tomorrow. But – one of the storylines of John Tate coming out of camp, and there's still two weeks to go, so maybe this changes, is that he's got to consistently day in and day out be more consistent. And I think that that will be the goal going into the summer uh, and certainly into August. By the way, apparently our man Chris Bennett letting us know at some point today, Cook tweeted, y'all bored. <laughs> Honestly, John Tate, not today. Mm. Bear Alexander, Samaj Burrell, we're not, we haven't been bored today, but I told, look, the funny thing is I told Chad, the morning guys, they needed, that, that needed to be a bear out. You needed to be doing the, playing the hits, play the hits, be an <laughs> FM DJ. They went with the cook thing. We went with the bear thing. I think at noon, I think we just had a better topic. <laughs> like people wanted to talk about bear. And I think people are really afraid to have the John T. Cook conversation. Nobody wants to live in a world where there's even the slightest bit of conversation that he's not going to be all world this year. Uh, and that conversation kind of is that to some degree. So, you know, we've written about it. We've talked about it. I know why they did the show that way. <laughs> I didn't hate the headline. I didn't tell them to change it or anything. But you had to know that was probably – a possibility of something that could happen it it for some people that will feel like shouting fire in a crowded theater i don't think it's that at all because the show didn't perpetrate that but i think that just reading the headline some people will feel that way if they don't look for the deeper context all right bo you got something for a uh, catch well i was just gonna say something chance when you get to these spring games, you kind of, I won't say that it's scripted, you know, like WWE style, but there is a message that gets sent in that game and the coaches deliver play scripts to tell that message. This all gets water under the bridge if Jonte Cook catches a 50-yard bomb in the spring game. Like at the end of, of the day, all this goes 100% away if Cook is made a star in the spring game. And if Sark and them want him to be the star, then he'll be the star. And so this isn't anything on you or the reporting or anything like that, but like you'll know what really transpired in camp a lot more by who gets the touches in the spring game because that's the guys they want to promote. This that's happened the guys last year with this happened with Malik Murphy. The reporting throughout yeah. the spring was like, hey, he and Arch, they're slowly developing, they're not quite ready to play. Malik looked good in the spring game. And no amount of me trying to tell people to slow down. Chad can tell you, we started doing shows in August, and I was like, guys, it was a one-time sample size out of a much larger sample size where it doesn't always look the way it did in the spring game. People didn't want to hear that. And then they saw Malik play, and they were like, oh, okay, I get it. Now I can see it. He's not quite ready for prime time, but I can see all of the tools. He looked really good in the spring game, and it became almost impossible to control the narrative at that point. When Quinn got hurt against Houston last year, there absolutely were people who were like, I've seen Malik Murphy in the spring game. We're not going to miss anything at all. He might even be better than Quinn. Quinn <laughs> might not get his job back. Like that happened. And all of it happened because over the course of 90 minutes in the spring game, Malik had himself a little bit of a moment. I remember, I remember once in the 2010 spring game sitting next to Chad at DKR 
And Garrett Gilbert had an awesome spring game. And I was like, that's what I'm talking about, Chad. You want to know why I'm so high on Garrett Gilbert? Look at how – I think he had like three or four touchdowns. He was slinging it all over the field. It looked good. And you got to the 2010 season. They were using that Arch Manning package in the Nebraska game. <laughs> Throw it. Oh, my God. Uh, all right. Hey, uh, we're going to get some more spring thoughts from Catch. Uh, before we do that, Bo, you were just talking about where you're going tomorrow, making people jealous that you're headed to Vegas. Let's talk about some other vacations they might be interested in with Engage. Well, let me let me preface it. It was a pit stop in Vegas for two hours before we went to Southern California for a work trip. I wish I could spend more time in Vegas, but it would have been cool to put some master's bets if it wasn't going to be rained out. But – this summer, I'm taking my wife on a 20th anniversary trip to Mexico. It's going to be phenomenal. We've been there multiple times, Cancun, Puerto Vallarta. Engage Vacations is set up every single one, and it makes it so simple. The work trip I'm on, they send you an itinerary, your tickets, everything, and it's right there for you. That's what Engage does. You tell them where you want to go. You tell them when you want to do it, and they take care of all the logistics down to getting the dinner reservations, but getting the shuttles to and from the airport, you have to tell them what you want and then you pay for it. The simplest thing you can do, it's engage vacations, 512-922-3322, 512-922-3322. It's engage vacations. Trust me, go on a vacation that you actually enjoy without having to deal with the headache. It's engage vacations. Sounds like a plan. It is the Outsiders brought to you by Poncho. Catch, let me throw one at you because oh, last on, week. I just got to ask this, Chad. Yes. Bo, you guys going to Scenic Juarez? Where are you guys going? <laughs> no, uh, work trip, actually. Uh... No, I mean you and the wife on the 20th. Oh, that's oh, where we're we going to Cancun. This... Bow, chicka, bow, wow. <laughs> we're going to Cancun. We're, we're staying at a very nice facility, adults only. I'll leave it at that. We've he been to the same facility. Uh... There's a kid's side and there's an adult side. We've always gone to the kid's side. (laughs) We're not going to the kid's (laughs) side this time. He's previously termed it a romantic vacation catch. A romantic (laughs) vacation. I've seen like five Netflix specials about places like that. I don't even. Adult side. What does that mean? (laughs) Okay. Well, let me explain it to you, Jeff, in ways that you as an adult male can understand. Please, please don't. I don't want to be a part of a four part (laughs) documentary. If, Please, if you no. give me a second, I can pull yeah. something up on my phone. Oh, wait, that thing's canceled, so we can't do that. I'll tell you this. Everybody um, there is nicknamed Bear Dick. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't put it any better than our than Jason. I'm yeah. just going to leave it be. Let's just say no one under the age of 18 gets to go to the pools or anything like that. It's just adult time. You don't have to worry about screaming <laughs> kids. And we all have screaming kids, but you don't have to worry about them. I'm so glad I asked. Thank you. <laughs> me too. Me too. Chad's like, I'm so glad you interrupted me. Chad, take it away. I had a football question ready to ask. <laughs> to get information out of Jeff Ketchum. So the idea last week and this week, Catch, was about spring battles. I can sense that Bo and Chance and Jason and some of the, the viewers – They want to know what's real and what's not when it comes to spring battles because sometimes it's hard to tell. Based on what you've been hearing 10 days away from the spring game, give us an idea of a battle or two that you feel is legit. It's an absolute pitched battle right now at a certain position. Do we have any of those? I mean, I think think there's a battle at the running back position. I think that's real. And I think it's real one through six. And and I think one through two are going to play a lot. But Jaden Blue is having a camp. He's having a better camp than C.J. Baxter is. And that follows on putting up some better numbers at times last year than C.J. Baxter did. So I think I think there's a real battle going on there as to who's going to be the, the 1A uh, and who's going to be the 1B. Wide receiver position's real. Uh, Sark isn't giving anybody such a vote of confidence – that it, I don't feel like anybody's got a starting job locked up. I think we feel like Jonte Cook's going to be a starter. DeAndre Moore is probably going to be a starter. Isaiah Bond's probably going to be a starter. But I think there's an actual battle taking place there. I think there's a battle at left guard. 
such a battle that Sark weirdly answered the left guard question yesterday in a way where he included the right guards into the conversation. And it was like, well, why is he doing that? Well, I, we could talk about that could be its own 20 minute conversation, but I think it's to keep guys from transferring. I think it's to keep guys engaged. I think it's to make Hayden Connor feel like uh, he's not in a uh Oh spot. Um, you know, chance was in one of those once upon a time where it's like, what do I do as a senior? What do you, what do I do? And, you know, I think they're trying to avoid that. And they try to do that with, you know, we talked about it with Casey Thompson, right? You try and, to play the shell game in a way where you don't lose someone that you don't want to lose, but by the same token, you may not be investing in that guy either. And so you're caught in between places. Um, D tackle, DN, backup linebacker. Certainly, I think in the secondary, the mention of Jalen Gilbo yesterday has me asking a lot of questions. So I think the competition on the team is really good. Um and I think you may have to go back to like those Mac Brown teams that Chance played on, where there was so much talent on campus that your ba- some of the backups are going to be NFL guys, and then it's just a matter of them getting their their time and their chances, especially when they're young. So I think it's a really deep team. It's got high level upsided NFL guys on it, uh, and I think there's more competition taking place than there's not. I think. Where do I think there's not being a real – I don't think there's a real competition at quarterback. I actually think all three roles are kind of designated, and I think there's some comfort in that this year. I think tight end, there's a little bit of battle. What's that? That's what I was going to ask. I, I wanted to know about that that position. Quarterback or tight end? No, tight end. I think you know you've got three guys. I think eventually Juan Davis will be three, and then I think Nye Black and, and Gunnar Helm are going to play a lot. But I think – Gunnar Helm for me is unquestionably the number one guy there. So now it's about they're going to play a lot of 12 personnel. Nye Black's got to get to a point where he's definitely in that package. I don't think we're quite there yet, but I I think we'll get there. I think when you look at the offensive line, left tackle's locked up. I think center and right guard and right tackle are pretty much set in stone. And then I think you're starting linebackers. At least one of them's definitely set in stone. I don't think da- you know David Bend and Mo Blackwell are kind of co-starters based on down and distance and and packaging. They're fairly interchangeable, um, you know. And then the secondary, Malik Muhammad's safe. Derek Williams is safe. But I think there are battles and positioning of boxing out and who's where do you want to. Is Jalen Gilbo one of the five best DBs on the team? If he is, maybe you move Jade Barron over to field corner and suddenly Terrence Brooks is out. But Terrence Brooks has had a really good camp. I think he stepped up in the face of discussion of him being replaced. I think there's some special teams questions where Burt Auburn is obviously locked in as your place kicker. The punting position, I think there's a good chance they go get a punter in the portal in the next couple of weeks. And then, then that guy will be the poor, the, the punter. Hmm. Real quick, oh, Jeff, you as you were mentioning these camp battles, there's one player that I know you were high on at one point that was a transfer portal guy that hasn't got to Texas yet because he had to clear up some grade stuff at Oregon state. And that's Mr. Bolden. What does that factor into this mix? Could it be a point where he may not have a spot when he gets here because they've already been kind of filled by guys in these camp battles, and now he's having to fight uphill? I don't know exactly how that would work out, but if he got here and the spot that he thought he had wasn't there, could he portal again? I don't think that's going to happen. I think this has actually been a camp that's worked out really well for Silas Bolden. If you're Silas Bolden, the thing that would bother you is – John Tate Cook has locked up one starter. I mean, it's obvious. Isaiah Bond looks badass. He he looks like a first-round draft pick in the making. If you're Silas Bolden, the thing that you'd have been afraid of is I get to campus and jobs have been won. I think Silas Bolden, if he shows up in the summer and immediately is consistent day in and day out, 
He's catching the football. They know what they're getting from him. There's not a lot of highs and lows. There's just what he does every day. I think he instantly puts himself into a position to be a starter. You're talking about a guy that led Oregon State in receiving uh, receiving yards, touchdowns. And the thing that I always mention about Silas Bolden, because it's, to me, the most impressive thing about him. He was at his best against in the big games. You go back and look at the when, – when he had – DJU as his quarterback, and I'm just not even going to try. Uh, not oh, you want to help? You want to help, Bo? Ukulele. Not, not, not on a show with Bo Edge. I'm not going to do it. No way. It's, it's ukulele. I, I know what it is. I'm just not going to even try. But when the, when those two were pairs, he caught at least five or six passes every game. You know, you can go back and watch the Utah game, and he was the best player on the field. Had over 100 yards receiving, a touchdown. He had like 53 yards rushing and a touchdown. He was an impact player. And I think the guys that could box him out haven't done it yet. Everybody at that position has been more in, – they've been inconsistently consistent. And if Silas Bolden shows up and does that, then you know he may be in trouble. But these guys aren't shutting the door on him, and I think – I think he's in a better position today than I would have thought at the very beginning of the spring. Matter of fact, Chad, we got to get Silas back on the show. I'm curious just what his perception of everything is. Maybe we'll wait till after the spring game is over, but I I'm curious as to what he thinks about everything that's transpired because what he conveyed to us was a lot of maturity. I've got the playbook. It's not going to be a problem. When I show up, I, I won't need any time. And these other guys have needed time. He's an older guy. He shows up as, you know, a grad transfer senior. He's going to be about that business. So, well, well, stay on that topic because you're talking about transfer guys coming in and making an impact, right? One of the big things I think is we're always looking for, is there that next Roy Williams? Is there that Corey Redding? We saw last year Anthony Hill having an impact. There's a lot that these freshmen that enrolled early – are having some impact. Who of them is the most impressive so far? Ryan Wingo's the guy for Silas Bolden to worry about. So, I mean, you know what? Because Ryan Wingo might end up being a day one or day two guy when it's all said and done. Those types of guys can't be held back. Eventually, they're just really freaking good. And when I talked to De- when, not when I talked to DeCorian Moore, but when our guys talked to DeCorian Moore with him on Saturday, and I listened back to the interview, he gushed about Ryan Wingo in a way that wasn't like I'm scared and now I'm not going to come to Texas because that guy's there. He was like that guy's big, he's fast, he's athletic. He I, seeing is believing. He was really impressed by that guy. Um, you know, like Roy Chance. You know, you were only going to keep that guy off the field for so long. And with Roy, it was never. He started day one. I think DJ started day one as well. Mm -hmm. Um, Eventually Sloan. Like, you can only hold the really talented guys back for so long. These guys have not done a good job, I think, of holding Ryan Wingo back. They've left the door open. So, I think if there's a guy right now that – if I'm Silas, I might be side-eyeing a little bit. It's Wingo because he's the future. And he's the guy that has a little C.J. Baxter going on with him and that Sark and Chris Jackson have, especially Sark. Sark led that recruitment. They've got a lot of sweat equity involved there. And, you know, one of the things I always thought about with Major and Sims when they were doing that battle back in the day, when Matt Brown and the staff showed up, they had an unbelievable amount of sweat equity in Chris Sims. They went, talk about going through the whistle. They stayed on that guy after he committed to Tennessee. Then they got him to flip. And then he shows up and there are all of these expectations. And Major was just a guy they inherited. And sometimes the guy that you have all of that sweat equity in ends up being the guy that gets the benefit of the doubt. So I think for Silas, they don't, you know, 
Isaiah Bond just showed up. I don't think there's a lot of sweat equity there. If they got somebody better than that, I don't think Sarkeesian will look back. He's going to get the best guys on the field. All Of all the guys at the wide receiver position that they've got the most personally invested in, I think it's John T. Cook, who's going to be a starter, and I think it's Ryan Wingo. Anybody else got something for catch before we let him go tonight? Everybody good? Everybody no. good? Let's Thank you for – thank you. We were almost going to get a shirt made to parallel the Michael Griffin perfect attendance shirt, but, <laughs> but Chance's brother doesn't make shirts anymore, and we haven't done it yet. So thank you so I much. I deserve it. I deserve it. But I will say this. I've been sick. <laughs> like, it, it wasn't like I was just skipping out on you guys. It's that I was in bed by, like, 8 o'clock on some nights just not having it. Chad can tell you, last week, by the end of the week, weirdly, I got sick again. It was like the flu said, get over here. It was like one of those more portal, not portal, but mortal combat moments uh, where it was like, before I leave your body, I'm going to mess with you for 48 more hours. Uh, and what, it just coincided with the Wednesday night show. That's, when, that's what Bo's egg salad's going to do to him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All I know is that the bear dick voice is the same as the flu voice. You need to get some voice differentiation when you're bear. You got to get Chad to do that. Chad's better at it than I am. All right, hang on, Catch. Let, before we let you go, let me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it full screen of you. Give us the bear dick so we can cut it for later. Here we go. Ready? Three, two, one. Bear dick. Rawr! <laughs> that nice. was almost as good as the well possum. Yeah. Volleyball <laughs> clap. Volleyball yes. clap. That is well done. Before we officially let him go, let me remind you, head over to orangebloods.com. Tomorrow night is the war room. The war room's always interesting. Something tells me tomorrow night's going to be really interesting. Check it out. Get in on orangebloods.com. If you have not done it, you've always wanted to, this is your time. Check out Orange I'm going to get some questions from my kids. I'm certain of it. I'm <laughs> sure you are. Yeah, and your wife maybe tonight. Uh, catch, always good to see you, sir. I'll talk to you tomorrow. There he Later, is. Guys. Thanks, man. Jeff Ketchum, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Jeff Ketchum. My <laughs> goodness gracious. There oh. is... Uh, Always a good time. Always a good time. Hey, before we before we do anything else, gentlemen, uh, Bo and Jason, would you like to fight over Star Ranch? Oh. Who, who, who wants to talk about it? Uh, here, I'll start. You, Bo, you jump. In. Were you there on Monday? Did you see the eclipse from Star Ranch on Monday? I did not. They had the oh. Liberty Hill Golf Tournament. I was unable to participate in it because I had to work that day, oh. and the kids were getting out of school. But I'm mm. telling you, stupid job. Springtime is here, and there is no better place to spend it than Star Ranch. They got a brand new fleet of golf carts out there. They got a beautiful 18 holes of playable golf. Jason can attest to this. It is playable. The playable. fairways are wide. Wide. The greens are receptive. They roll true. You can actually make putts. Star Ranch is the place you want to go play when you want to have fun and not grind it out. It's kind of like, do you want to play a U.S. Open course with rough this thick and torture yourself? to go shoot 88 or 100 or whatever the hell your normal scores, Or do you want to go play a golf course where once in a while you can actually have a real birdie putt? Or once in a while you hit a drive and it stays in the middle of the fairway and you hit a short iron. It's a fun golf course. Jason, you agree? I love it. Uh, 88 would be, it sounds uh, magical. That sounds tremendous to me, Bo. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're a great golfer, uh, birdie is available. Eagle is available. Scoring is available. And if you're not so great, it is not so punitive uh, when you hit a terrible shot. 252 golf is what you call to make a tee time or just scan the QR card, uh, QR code right there. It's the golf club at Star Ranch. Jason, don't you love it when the real golf folks talk about 88s like yeah. it's like yeah. it's not, <laughs> like it's garbage, like it's something yeah. you you'd spit on. I would I you realize how many drinks I would buy if I shot an 88? <laughs> I mean, do you understand what I'm talking about? Come on. 88. I I've sh I shot 89 one time and I think I texted Bo five times about it. Oh, I <laughs> The scorecard, pictures of dude you didn't even know holding the flag. Like, I mean, it was out of control. Will uh, Valentoris was pretending to be your caddy. It was great. <laughs> it was insane. By the way, speaking of golf, Bo, since some somebody threw this in earlier and I forgot to, I was going to mark it, but somebody was asking about 
how smart it would be to bet on Scotty Scheffler. Would he be your pick for the Masters, or do you have somebody else that you'd pick? With the odds, I, price isn't really, great. That's a really tough wager to lay down. I think he's four and a half to one. Like that doesn't happen in golf. Like that's like Tiger level odds on somebody. It's basically him versus the field. And in that case, I, you take it. It's a better wager to find somebody that's 25 to 1, 30 to 1, or a group of players that you can get clustered at 10 to 1 than putting all your money on Scotty Scheffler. Now, do I think he wins? Yes, he's the best player in the world right now. But Chris Bennett actually just tw- you know put it on the little chat line. It's the exact point. If you've watched Scotty Scheffler this year, he has struggled from time to time from three to five feet, three to eight feet. You know, he's missed a lot of putts. Augusta is not a place you want to be when you're not feeling 100% with a putter. And so, yes, he's won there. And, yes, he probably will go win it. But he would not be – with the odds, I don't think it's worth the money. I think you can find better value picks. If you uh, want if you want some free money in a bah humbug, you don't want to root for this, worst guy ever bet, bet Tiger Woods to miss the cut. Oh, All good right. grief. He's, well, look, he's teeing off uh, late tomorrow. The weather is is going to be disastrous in the morning. Everything's going to be delayed. He's not going to finish. Yep. Tiger Woods, then when he, when he plays in the morning, he has to wake up like four hours before his tee time to stretch and get ready and do all of this stuff. And so he's going to have to be up super early, 3 a.m. on Friday, and go and probably play 25, 30 holes of golf in one day for a guy who can't walk on a course that's very difficult to walk. Uh, Tiger Woods is going to miss the cut at the Masters for the first time ever. Free money. My God, you go. are, are you? you the, I'm are sorry. You the, are you I the know. dad that just sits on the couch New uh, Christmas Eve, waits for Santa to get to the top of the chimney, and then lights a fire? Like, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm look. Oh. I, I said it was a no fun bet, but if you if you want free money, it's not a bad bet though. I can't yeah. argue the point other than the fact that you want to root for Tiger. Like, yeah. so therefore, like you, unless you're a professional gambler you know, or poker player or claim to be poker player like Jason, Mm -hmm. you're betting for entertainment value as much as you are the odds or anything else. You know, you know, stupid humble brag because I made zero fucking dollars out of this, but I had four brackets that if Purdue wins the national title game, I make (laughs) good money because I had picked Mm -hmm. Purdue over UConn. I had NC State in the final four, but I didn't have any brackets that had UConn over Purdue because I – Thought I was going to outfox everybody and have the team that nobody mm. was going to pick. Well, you know what? I had the option with a friend of mine to, the race source, put down a money line bet on UConn. But then when they told me the odds were minus 305, I was like, it's too high. I don't want to spend all my profit on this money line hedge. I'm going to root for Purdue. It's going to be a great night. Well, needless okay. to say, I was already asleep before the game was over because it was a shit game. Purdue didn't win nothing. I got $0. I'm, the only hedge I made was just enough to cover the damn entry fees, so I broke even for the bracket. Uh, the you way, here, I got I got a more fun bet for you. Okay, <laughs> will by. Bo shit his pants on the plane to Vegas tomorrow? <laughs> yes, <laughs> bet the yes. Taking it. Okay, gotta lay some juice. Oh, He's no. gonna lay some juice. All right, <laughs> but <it's laughs> like, hold on. I will take all your wagers, but how do I collect the money? Like. Who's the foul? Like, I'm not he telling my wife to go verify it. At 30,000 feet. So if we, you're saying, Jason, you say if we put the over under at four and a half on running trips to the bathroom, you're going over? You're going with the over? <laughs> yeah. Bow well, down the aisle? Line. That's a good line. It says sell by. <laughs> We're with the prop it's bet the of how many times. It's got plenty of time. Hey, we got a, we got the side the side prop bet of how many times the person sitting next to him gets up and walks to the bathroom just out of disgust just to get away from he goes to the bathroom area on, for better man. smells. It's I got cool. news for I got news for you, Bo. We've double checked the actual uh at the actual sell by date on that pimento cheese. It's the day Jack Nicholas retired. That's the day <laughs> they were supposed to get rid of that. I'm telling you, just just out of spite chance. I'm going to take that on the plane and I'm going to sit there and eat it with <laughs> oh the chip. Oh, God. Please. Please. Oh. How about that for your 8 a.m. flight to Vegas? 
A big fat guy in a master's shirt eating egg salad. <laughs> what, what, no matter what money you may or may not have down on it, Scheffler's going out at 942 on Thursday, Tiger at 1224, and Spieth at 1248 if you're interested. There's supposed to be rain this year, Bo? Is that Just right? Just tomorrow. tomorrow. Just tomorrow. For, like, tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow okay. morning. Is supposed, well, all the stuff that hit here two days ago is supposed to hit there. The same Got front it. that was coming through here, it makes its East Coast appearance. Okay. Thursday morning. So chance is 100% spot on. So was, or Jason was 100% spot on. They're not finishing tomorrow. The guys that tee off on the afternoon, here's the one problem, the flaw in your bet, Jason, is if they don't tee off the afternoon wave at all. Mm. Because if they do that, then they will split it to where mm. it'll roll into Saturday. And if that happens, then Tiger would have plenty of time. So that, that would be the one, like your thought that Tiger's yeah. going to have to play 30 holes in a day. Well, that goes away if nobody tees off until four tomorrow. Because then he doesn't tee off until the afternoon on Friday, and he's spaced. Yeah, it's a good point. He would fail uh, in round three when they try to double dip it on Saturday, but by then he would have already made or missed the cut. All right, so do we want to uh, slip in a bear dick? I mean, uh, do we want to <laughs> slip in a dick move of the week before we're done, so Jason Dick? I'll slip it in, Chad. No All problem. Right, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. What do you got? Um, I don't know. I'm casting. Look, we've been we've been kind of delicate around this topic, and I don't want to say anything that I'm not supposed to say. But uh, as the, the the viewers of this program likely know, Tavondre Sweat uh, allegedly made some questionable decisions and has been charged uh, with driving while intoxicated this weekend. Mm-hmm. Don't drink and drive, kids. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, yeah, especially when you're you know lining up to make some NFL millions. All right, yeah. get an Uber, get a driver, find something like that. However. Some of the details of this case are are rather unfortunate, okay? If you read the police affidavit, the arresting officers made sure to point out that Mr. Sweat's clothes had been soiled. (laughs) That's all they say, okay, is that his clothes were soiled. Now, I put on this shirt today. It's arguably soiled, all right? But I feel like when you put in the police report... (laughs) That his clothes were soiled. That means a certain thing, okay? They're telling the world this guy shit his pants. All right. I don't know if that's what they're necessarily saying well, to try I, to look, defend this... Mr. Sweat here. Doesn't soil can't soil just mean stained? Like I don't... it can be stained with anything, right? Well, he was just in a car accident that flipped his ride, so you know things happen. It could be well, a just. It could be a justifiable shitting of the pants, unlike what Bo's going to do tomorrow. Now, um, wait no. a minute. If I get... <laughs> if if I, I think I'm making it to tomorrow. If I, get sick, if I get sick and I <laughs> That's throw why I know I'm running the airplane, but it'll be over before then. If I throw up on my shirt, or if they found me, like, you know, if I don't know, if like if, if nachos, if chili know, cheese nachos fell Look, on my shirt, isn't it soiled? Yeah, I agree. I agree. But, but write that in the affidavit. Homie Here's had chili question. cheese nachos on his shirt. But look... I'm not even saying that in the olden days, okay. they would have rolled up on this car that was on its side and said, hey, you're Tavondre Sweat from the Longhorns, right? Well, make your way on home, young man. Uh, I'm not saying that the cops need to do that, okay? But you don't need to write in the police report that he was soiled. Dick move, cops. Well, dick here's move. my question, though, and here's the bigger dick move. What the hell is wrong with our town where there actually has to be a checkbox on the form for APD to have to put whether somebody was soiled or not? Like, how often is it happening? Like, it should be like a line where you write it in. Like, defendant did blank. Or there was a – it was a box. I saw the affidavit. It was yeah. soiled or not soiled. How many people are you running into that are soiling themselves? That is that is an interesting distinction, Bo, because if you're going – if you're the case file guy and you're like, all right, Tuesdays I do non-soiled cases. <laughs> Wednesdays I do the soiled cases. It usually takes me longer on hump day. You know what I'm that saying? Brown box is for those that are soiled. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. And Austin is turning into San Francisco every single day, except for <sighs> instead of shitting on the streets, they just shit on themselves. Oh, so, man. Lord. But this is my my issue. And, uh, I, I don't want to disparage any of our men and women in law enforcement, no. whatever. But here's my problem. What relevance does that have to anything? Like, what relevance does it have to the case? You're not going to, he had to blow, so you're not going to, well, he was drunk because he soiled himself. But or doesn't it show out of him? You know what I mean? Show, like, does it show how out of it he might have been, Chance? 
that might be. The so I think when your car flips on its side, things happen. There's yeah, a reason I, why I think I'm, that the right. Like, hold on. That's, that, I guess that was like kind of my yeah. point too, Chance. Like when somebody's in an actual car accident. Now, how that accident happened, that can be a different discussion point. And I'm not condoning if he'd had too many tequila shots that he shouldn't be found guilty for that. But he was just in a car accident where his car flipped and slid on the side, probably at a pretty high rate of speed based on where it was. the accident happened. That would be a natural reaction for a lot of people. I'm just saying, like, well, peeing and- or pooping or any of those things <laughs> happen. If you happen to, you know, <laughs> we don't need the semantics, Bo. Uh, why did you say that like, like you're our kindergarten teacher? Yeah. Why did you do that? Do you need to pee or poop? We're at the zoo. We're at the zoo. Okay, the look, teacher. my wife's a first grade teacher. I hear lots of stories. Okay. Oh, my God. All I know is my mother used to always tell me to make sure you wore clean underwear just in case of a situation such as that where yeah. you had to go to the hospital. <laughs> Your mother told you about soling yourself in now, a now, the only question you told me not to. Here, ah. Here's the question, Chad. Do you think Jeff is happy he missed out on this part of the conversation or sad? Uh he's not yeah. now he's not feeling bad about uh standing yeah. us up on the yeah, uh, on the other two shows. You want to clip this off and use this tomorrow, that's fine. This is <laughs> probably as, as much cutting, of the day. <laughs> cutting edge of reporting as you're gonna get on this topic. So. Absolutely, absolutely. All right. I think that just about does it. Let's see here. Here's an interesting opinion that came in on the chat. Mike says Ooh. just flat out APD Ooh. hates UT play. How dare you, Mike? I'm sure that's Why? not true. I am sure that is not true. Bo, before we get out of here, we mentioned that uh, – we'll mention again that Poncho has something for crawfish season. What about stuffed? They got stuff for crawfish season as well? They got everything. Is something in your eye there, buddy? Did you get some Cajun sprinkles up in there? Like you're kind it of is, it, it is. It is. I'm getting out. I'm <laughs> I'm getting out. You tell them about it. Stuff Foods is your place to go for all your crawfish needs. Etouffee, gumbo, boiled crawfish. If you need to buy 40 pounds of crawfish, they're bringing in the wild caught now, so it's not that frozen stuff that you want. I won't disparage a local grocery store chain that I absolutely love. You don't want to go there because the crawfish is frozen. Get the good stuff. Get the wild caught at Stuff Cajun Meat Market. They also have nine kinds of sausages. Boudin, Jason's favorite, the meat pies. Whatever you need. All the accessories you need to boil crawfish. All the spices. All the seasonings. Stuff Cajun Meat Market. Meat pie. <laughs> meat pie. The meat bear, pie. The bear I was waiting. If I, if I don't hear it. I'm going to do it myself. All right, before we get out of here, let's remind everybody one more time. We're going to go green one more time. Outsiders brought to you by Poncho. There it is. That is the Magnolia. Look over to your lower left there. Bo's rocking the Amen. The Amen is the Magnolia with the Mother of Pearl snaps. So if you want to get a little country with your master shirt, that's how you do it. Look, Poncho country, Outdoors. This is stylish. This is resort wear that I'm wearing when I go to California. Dude, it's fantastic. It they also have it by this time tomorrow. It will not it be will soiled. Be, <laughs> it will be soiled with airplane alcohol uh, this time tomorrow. Crawfish season's here. Mud bug. Check out the mud bug at Poncho. Also, they've got some of the ultra light shirts out there for you. Uh, and they are very, very popular. So be on the lookout for those ultra lights that have been hitting in April. Thanks to Poncho for being a great sponsor anybody else got anything tonight outsider crew everybody good we all we, we, we had a strange bear dick kind of a show tonight didn't we <laughs> man hey, it, it wasn't the possums but raw. It, <laughs> wow, that was scary that was very that, that was that was the single remember that night moment. when we had five of us and we were all doing yeah. the possums <laughs> That was good. I'm going to see what I can do with that Jeff Ketchum. We'll test my video editing ability on the Jeff Ketchum thing. We'll see what we can do with that for uh, for Mr. Jason. That, that might be our – hey, once a month we get a catchphrase. Started with legitimately worth the shit. I think this year, this month's is bear dick. This <laughs> might be it. Might be it. Did we did we hear from Specs yet tonight? I think that's maybe the only thing we didn't do. Let's get – Let's let's get a let's get something you know more official on the end, and we won't end with our madness. Let's end with Lisa and the rabbit, and don't forget Specs. You're needing Specs same day delivery can save the day with our Specs app or online shopping. From world class wines to hard to find spirits and craft beers to gourmet foods, delicious snacks, and spectacular sweets, it's Specs. 
Cheers to savings. Yes, indeed. Thanks to everybody who jumped in the specs chat tonight. Damn near 700 folks in there as we get ready to close the doors. We appreciate it. Next Wednesday night, we'll hit you again at 830, and that will be even closer to the spring game. We'll be at the 17th. We'll be inside that transfer portal window, so who knows who else will be gone from Texas and maybe who else we will be hearing about coming in. Definitely keep your eye on that Bear Alexander story and the Michigan D lineman. You never know. Um, and check out orangebloods.com for all the very latest. War Room Night is tomorrow night. So until next Wednesday night at 8.30, we are – and be safe, Bo. Be safe on the plane. Do not soil yourself <laughs> or others, please. We don't want to hear – that yeah. the aviation police has to tell us that you were soiled in your beautiful poncho shirt. Although Use I hear, it, if you I hear it beads off nicely. I hear that it just it just whisks right away on the poncho. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we are the outsiders, by the way. And with or without soiling, we 